I have. Um, okay. All right, I'll call the September 13th, 2023 sustainability meeting to order. Um, I'll do roll call. Uh, John Durant. I'm here. Steve Douglas. Here. Michael Pomikowski here. Melissa Gavin. And Aaron Linus. And Brian Mooney's in attendance also. We won't review the agenda. Is there any public comment? No, we'll move in. Was there public comment? No, I didn't receive any. Oh, okay. Uh, committee member report outs. I think what I was going to talk about was basically going to be covered later on. Does anybody else have any report outs they want to go over? Nothing from Steve. Okay. And nothing from John? No. All right. Well, now we are at discussion of possible approval of the August 9th. 2023 sustainability committee minute meeting minutes. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Steve will second. Okay. A motion and motion from John, second from Steve. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. All right. Meetings have been minutes have been approved. Um, so now we're going to talk about the sustainability plan, the update on the school and government benchmarking offering. I did uh, send an email to that Joe fella who was like our contact person for the for the benchmarking and just asked him if it was okay if I just entered our energy information because we were wondering if it needed the water and the waste and he just said the energy would be fine if I wanted it to, to still qualify for the focus on energy credits. He said if I wanted to do the water and waste, that would just be an added bonus. So I've already contacted Bobby and she's given me all the MG&E bills. I will begin that process, I believe. I'm just making a note to myself to begin benchmarking info entry. Uh, moving on to the energy assessment and summary. I don't know if you guys saw inside of the packet, I included an email from Jerry that I uh, sent him asking about the wastewater treatment plants and whether or not stuff is at end of life, whether or not they should be upgraded at all. I don't know. Did you guys read that at all? <clears throat> Do you want me to summarize it? I did read it. Um. My question is, did he say yes to anything? No, he did not. Okay, that's what I thought. He pretty much said nothing's near end of life. Um, basically, all the things that the Focus on Energy people proposed, they basically looked at during the plant design in 2005 and determined that they weren't viable at that time just because of the added maintenance it's just easier to let a pump run all the time than put a control system in that costs x amount of money that needs to be repaired all the time i'm assuming is kind of like what it got it seemed like um the only other thing well he talked about possibly the plant's 20 years old most likely at 25 years a study should be done with possible implementation at 30 years old where some of these things could possibly happen, but that would be in a five to 10 year span. Like if the plan has to start to go through major updates, et cetera, maybe technology caught up. And then the last thing was we had asked about that air handling or the, the, the cracks around the doors and such. And basically he said, the, system, the building doesn't have an air handling system and sealing those cracks would basically could cause an employee hazard. Because when they work in there, even if it sits all night, they come back the next day, they can still tell they were welding the day before. So that was kind of the gist of it. Okay, so that's that. Now we're to progress on the plan. I have so I do have a question on that that last one. Sure. So, so I mean, 
that deleted this completely from a sustainability perspective. But if a day later people can come back and still smell fumes and things like that, that does not exactly sound like a healthy environment. And so to me, I would think that adding an air handling unit would be to the benefit of the village just so that they don't have workers' comp claims of, hey, I worked in this building and you poisoned me. And, and then maybe if we did that, we could actually fix the door and have both a healthy and efficient building. I don't want to just skip over that because we don't have an air handling unit. It sounds like a terrible situation. Well, I uh, I don't know. I kind of, I mean, he basically says sealing these gaps would worsen an air quality problem that is an employee hazard. So, you know, whether or not I feel, I mean, this is the first I'm hearing of this being an employee hazard. He hasn't put anything in the capital plan being like, we need to install an air handling system. I don't have any idea what to tell you, John. We can put on a radar and be like, maybe this needs to go in or not. I don't, I don't know, I, but I understand I, what you're saying. I said this is being recorded. I am going to say once again on public record that even if this is not a sustainability issue, this is an issue the village needs to address. And, and I will also say the exact same thing at the finance committee next month. And, and if I need to come to a village board meeting, to do my three minutes of public comment, I will say it again that this isn't this isn't healthy. So I'm just saying, hey, as a sustainability committee, and we do talk about public health and sustainability, that we should go on record as saying this building needs an air handling unit and this building needs to become energy efficient. Because Jeremy's basically saying it isn't energy efficient because it's a dangerous work environment. That is what he's saying. Yeah, it's a, I mean, in uh, in medicine, you'd call this an incidental finding. You know, you we've stumbled across something that really is sort of outside our purview. And I guess um, it's to our, you know, we, I feel like John, we sort of have a responsibility to at least put it in front of someone who can make that call. I don't know who that that person is, and if I don't know if Jerry may have already tried to pursue a fix. Uh, maybe he hasn't. Maybe um, he, you know, he needs help triaging that. Um, I, I'm sure in the course of his day, he probably sees all sorts of things that it would be nice to have fixed. Um, so, who I think our due diligence is at least to escalate it to someone who in the know that could at least evaluate. Um, you know, whether it's worth pursuing. I think I a don't... memo or something directed from the sustainability committee based on this information could be shared with the village or so we could share that with the village board, either public comment or um, either or in the form of an email that I send okay. off to the entire board to let them know if this just came to our attention that this is true. Okay. Yeah, that's a great uh -huh. idea. I, I, I have absolutely no issue drafting that. Okay, sounds great, John. If you want to draft something, I mean, I don't even know. Does it need to even come back to our committee? Could you just write it up and send it to Brian and Brian can... I can send it to the board members okay. effective upon receipt. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... If you want a set of eyes on it, John, I'm glad to review also. Okay. I, I think my my recommendation would be like, you know, short, sweet, straight to the point. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we found we've heard of this when we're concerned and we thought we should bring it up. OK. Thank you for doing that. No problem. Yeah, that'd be great, John, to uh, 
let that be known. I'm kind of, yeah, send it to the board. Then I don't know, Brian, I'm assuming it's end up at a staff meeting, et cetera, or whatever, you know? My guess is Jay will advise as to the next steps being to the board or to yeah, in the board meeting or staff meeting, whichever way he will want to take it from there. But I think it's incumbent to bring it to their attention now that this is known um, that that's, yeah, it's something that should be on the radar for being addressed. Well, definitely. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions asked of Jerry about, you know, how bad is it, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I mean. But there are ways to test for that. Well, right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Sounds great, John. And so we aren't going to motion or anything. John, I'll write still it. Still no power, right? Say again? That wasn't from here. Oh, sorry. I think that was me. Oh, Okay. <laughs> All right. So John will write something up and Steve, you'll review it and get it to Brian. Yep. Oh, sounds good. Sounds great. All right. So that's what we had going on there. What else do we have going on? Okay. So um, now we're on progress on sustainability plan. Um, I just want to talk with that because one of their first things on that list is we were asking about the uh, uh, the solar solar. I con I contacted Jeff Davis about solar up on his land. I had a phone call with him, and it was kind of. Uh, I don't know. It was sort of confusing. I wasn't exactly sure if he wasn't exactly sure how he felt about it. Uh, basically, he rents the land out right now for agricultural purposes, but he'd be willing to do it, I think, if he could possibly lease the land and receive more money for it was kind of the feeling of the call a little bit. Um, but then it was like, I was like, I know Bill was going through a developer who then would most likely uh, sell the project to MG&E. And he was like, well, if there's a developer, that's like a middleman and they're taking some cut of the money. So it'll be, you know, I would just rather like work directly with MG&E. And I wasn't sure if he was meaning he was going to work directly with mg &E, or if he meant the sustainability committee should work directly on mg &E on his behalf, it got really kind of confusing there because it was, there was a lot of talking, but not a whole lot of deciding. Does that make sense? And at one point he even said that he thought that solar field solar farms weren't very attractive looking <laughs> and to which I then asked him, does he want one outside his front window or outside the windows of his house? And he didn't really recoil, but he still didn't. I was, it was just a bizarre conversation, like phone call, like in that respect. Um, and I, yeah. So I don't know what I should do or if I should call him back or what are your guys' ideas on this? I seem to recall we had someone that was helping us shepherd this idea through the committee, helping us find potential sites. I'm trying to remember, was that a third party, John? Was that like a consultant or was that somebody from MG&E? No, I thought that, I thought we had tried to, this is probably the wrong word as a descriptor, but I thought we had like a, a broker of some sort. That, yes. And and I don't know. I was once that kind of happened, it moved away from us. And and it, it, there was stuff that was happening with with Bill and the board and the broker. And 
And so that's where this all came with because Bill's not here anymore. It doesn't seem like the broker is around anymore and the board's not talking about it. And I think that's why Melissa brought it up, you know, a meeting or so ago saying, whatever happened to this? Because it just <clears throat> left it just died and when Bill left. died yeah. and, and we don't know where anything stands. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> I, I agree what this is what I think the short timeline was was Jeff Bill had reached out to Jeff because it was property that was close to the village Jeff came to that meeting and was kind of like yeah I'm I'm a me like I'm up for it, but I want to see what all the terms are of it when I when when I did the phone call with him he spoke about how he possibly put a uh he was in talks with a cell phone tower company to build a cell tower up on his land also so that he could get some rental income from that and yeah. during the, i'm serious like so he 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 was and there was even a thing in the local newspaper because i go down to the library and try to read like you know a month's worth of local newspapers like at one time and just power through it and there was actually a a call for comment for a cell tower to be located up there. Like they had gotten like sort of that far along to where, Oh, what do people feel about this? Or it was something like that. I remember seeing it in there, but he basically said that when they got down to the lease, the cell phone tower company were, were basically sort of, acting like they owned the land and that he was leasing it from them and he was like like they it sounded like they were demanding a lot of things and he didn't really want to pursue that any longer so i don't know so that's what happened with that with the other properties i know bill was looking into purchasing them and both of the other one one site the owner decided not to sell to the village the other site i think the land ended up they, they wanted too much money for it and because power lines ran over it with the easement you couldn't put solar panels under it, and so it kind of really restricted the amount of energy that was going to come off the land anyway so but but i think through bill's conversations with jay uh they really wanted to pursue land ownership to put the farm on it because we didn't want the village to incur additional costs for this for, for this to happen and when those two land purchases died that's like right sort of like when bill just sort of i think just kind of gave up like he was like okay i tried i tried to buy this land nobody wanted to sell it to me so i'm just not going to try it because it sounded like jeff really wasn't in the yeah, that's, as well as that, that's not how MG&E sells this stuff or Wisconsin Power and Light sells this stuff on their websites. They very specifically talk about 25-year leases. Right. Because that's the life of a solar panel. And and so they're, they're when they're putting their own in, they're talking to landowners and saying, you know, it's for 25 years, and in 25 years, if you don't decide you don't want to do this anymore, we'll take everything off. Um, right. And and that's how I think, and that's what I remember Bill talking about is that the village was going to buy this land and um, we were going to use the proceeds from the solar farm to pay off the loan to buy the land. And at the end of 25 years, when they took the solar panels off, the village owned all this land free and we didn't pay anything for it. Why? I mean, you know, because, I mean, we had a loan that whole time, but the lease from the solar farm paid off the mortgage on the land. So it was like this win-win kind of thing. Would it be worthwhile just, um, I'm sure we could look back in the minutes and figure out who this person was. I remember he was very good. He was very informative and his, his mission was essentially to be the, kind of like this matchmaker between MG&E and a potential site for a solar farm. Uh, I'm just wondering if um, Jeff were able to talk with this guy who who would be able to articulate kind of like the options better than we can 
you know, would that be useful? And like, do we have even the authority to engage this person again? Well, that's, so I went back through, uh, was it last week? Sometime I was able to locate the individual, the email, because I think, I don't know if it was in an old sustainability packet that Bill had included an email from him. Cause I went back through trying to do like what you're talking about, Steve, like go back through and kind of like look at the minutes to see like when this was done or when this was being spoken about. Uh-huh. His name was Eric something. So the email is definitely in there. If not, I could just send an email to Bill and he would get me in contact with him or even let me know if he's still doing the same thing. To where he would, I mean, maybe he's still, I don't know if he ever worked up a proposal on Jeff's land. I mean, he might just have that sitting around on his hard drive and be like, hey, this is what I had. This is what I did in a preliminary study for it, you know? If I recall, I think there were, I think there were like three potential candidates and they really only kind of worked up the one that ended up falling through, if I I, recall. I I think you're right. I think they really only worked up the Brunner farm, like to full extent, like where he was talking about placing land or placing the panels. And then it was like, it was basically that thing that you had in that folder, Brian. Um. And then it was like, oh, if we have that other field over there and then we build an access road through, that'll take some space off of this field where, you know, it was like all this sort of stuff where he kind of started doing that. I mean, do you want me to send just came back on or anything to ask about? I mean, I think you kind of did already, Michael, right? Like get kind of a rundown of what the properties were from Bill. I mean, there's... It, or is it worth re-engaging Bill? I I don't I I I don't think so. I mean, um, I mean, we already did a pretty good land look at for places. I mean, I know one. I don't remember what what the woman said. It was a place west of Kelsher Implement, like the, like where the creek snakes around behind it. I think she owns a bunch a bunch of that land out there and i think bill was talking to her at one time but i don't i don't know if she really wanted to lease that land at all i don't remember that there's a she has a cornfield i think out in front of her her place yeah uh, yeah um so i don't know what we should do it seems like it would be a shame just to it you know Are you there, Steve? You just kind of cut out. I don't think, hello, is anyone there? Yep, yeah, we're still here, Michael. Okay. Well, Steve, are you still here? With Steve not being here, we just lost our quorum, I think. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a sign that we should, uh, yeah, <laughs> we just left. Uh, so maybe that's a sign we should move on from the plan priorities and uh, keep the agenda going. Well, it means I don't think we can keep having a meeting. Oh, yeah, we can't even have the meeting, true, yeah. All yeah. right. We don't have a quorum, we just lost our quorum. So we can't we can't even uh, make a a, a um, motion <laughs> to, to adjourn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we can do that. <laughs> um, All right, should we just call it? Oh no, here he is. Give me a second. Let's see if he's trying to get back in here. Okay. Steve, are you back? I think I'm back now. You guys hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. My the power came back on, so my Wi-Fi tried to take over the meeting. <laughs> it's not ready yet. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, I was gonna I was just gonna say it's, it would be a shame just not to complete circle around and complete the loop with Jeff if there is even a possibility um, there. 
No, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, so that fella's name, I, I can go back through my emails. I know it's Eric something or it was a sustainability packet. It wasn't that, wasn't that tough to, to find. Um, yeah, I don't know because Jeff was all like, I don't want to, it's kind of like, he just kind of like when I said something about that middleman broker thing, like he just bristled at that, but I think, hmm. I don't know if that's the way it's still done or what, you know? Is this kind of what it seems like it is? Like how it's, I mean, I, I don't know. that. I mean, this is where you're getting into areas where I am not versed in how to build a solar farm. Is it is it worth inviting Eric back here to sustainability and kind of he could lay it out for us how they work? Or how it goes. I mean, just so just for our knowledge and you know, we definitely could. That wouldn't be bad, and it might be worth it to to even heck if if we're gonna do that, it would be great to get either one Eric and Jeff in contact before the meeting or at the meeting or something like that. We need to put Eric and Jeff together, is what we need to do. And that's the way this project's gonna happen. Unless Jeff is going to call MG&E on his own and be like, hey, do you guys want to build a solar farm up here? And that could be a totally viable route as well, because then the village doesn't, uh, you know, get like get involved at all. The only thing like looking because this was the email from Bill when he sent it back. Because I don't know if the village is going to have to enter in to like if the village is going to say we're going to buy, you know, one megawatt of power from this solar farm guaranteed, excuse me, and this is the price that we're going to pay for this electricity. It just depends on if MG&E is going to want some sort of guarantee or some sort of base level, you know, kilowatt hour price. Because then what happens along with that is if, say, MG&E does that and this thing's, you know, negotiating along or whatever, but mg es like, yeah, for this being solar energy, we're now going to charge the village an extra penny, a kilowatt hour more for all the electricity that you use or under this. Would that pass the village board? That's the fundamental question is what is this going to end up costing the village because if we aren't we don't own the land then we don't really have a whole lot of control to set a lot of terms which is what bill pointed out in his email and and that's a strange consideration begin the reason why i say that is because i think the only reason or one of the only reasons why Jay was behind this before was that it wasn't going to be an additional expense to the village when we were going to buy the land and the mg &E was going to lease it from us and we weren't going to be paying more for electricity because we were getting paid money for the lease, et cetera. But there's an assumption that's being made there. I mean, there's, Two assumptions that are actually being made there that I'm not sure we know that they're true. Oh, the of course. We could course. buy the land and based on the, the amount that MG&E was going to lease it from us, that we were going to come out even. Um, well, because we, we, we haven't gone in far enough to know how much the land costs or what MG&E is willing to pay us to lease it. We don't know the answer to that. And the second one is on the, you know, loss of control. We're still then taking electricity from MG&E and paying for that electricity because, and, and, and that's just kind of the way it works, but then we are at the mercy of the rate setting process. So, Either way, you know, 
I don't think we have enough information to say one way or another what we're going to do, because I don't think we traveled down the path far enough to say, okay, if we were to buy this land, it'll cost us X number of dollars. And if mg and &E is going to lease it from us, they will lease it from us for this. And if we own the land and they're leasing it, are they willing to actually guarantee us a rate for 25 years? We never asked any of those questions. No, no. And I think... And I think we need to. Right. I, I think what happened with the sustainability committee before is that we just sort of... Uh, uh, I think a motion was made for Bill Chang to just go and pursue a solar farm and propose all of his findings to the village board. And it was not going to come back to the sustainability. Oh, yeah. okay. Did you give her some money so she can, she can play tonight? Thank you. Well, we'll what, talk later. What's on motion that? Well, oh, yeah. No, I'm not saying I don't think the motion stands anymore since Bill Chang left. So, so. I, I, I'm going to go back to what Steve said about five or ten minutes ago, which is, do we bring, I forgot his name already, back in to talk to us, and we're allowed to ask these sort of questions and see how it works. Bring Eric back. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think we're going to answer him here tonight. Oh, no, we're definitely not. Okay, well, that means we need to bring Eric back in the loop, and we need to seriously start talking to Jeff and sort of bringing him into the loop and figuring out what we want to do to pursue this or what our options are. I think I would like to, um, I think it would benefit us to just get up to speed, bring Eric in first, get up to speed. Like what is the process? Cause we don't know any of the variables as John was saying, what is the process? And then moving forward, who should talk to whom and then do they have the, uh, you know, quote unquote, authority from the village? So I, I think this Eric, he does this all the time. He's, the, you know, he knows all the the ins and outs. And so I I think we could benefit from, hey, let's just take a, um, you know, a refresher on this. How would we proceed if we think we have somebody? And, he, and if we don't, if Jeff doesn't work out, you know, in the future, will we will be more informed when you know other opportunities come up and how do we find those opportunities do we you know continue to approach landowners um because this was you know a pretty high priority and we we had some potential spots so um I, th I think it'd be good for us to to bring eric in i i remember him being you know very willing to do this it's you know kind of what he does so yeah um i agree <laughs> Okay, well, I will dig through and try to find Eric's contact information. And I think I just had an email or I can always get in touch with Bill Chang. I'm sure he probably has it. Who knows? He might be building a solar farm in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I can look into that and I can work with you, Brian, because in case... You know, he doesn't, I don't know, talk to me or talk to you. Maybe we can schedule him for the next meeting and he can come in and tell us what's new in the world of solar farms or if it's viable or maybe he just would prefer just, I mean, how, like whatever he wants to do, like whoever he wants to, how yeah. does that sound? I, I think that's a good plan. And I know there's some stuff in the news about MG&E going through some kind of a rate repayment thing with solar panels right now or rate setting that's revising their figures and stuff so maybe he'll have some insight into that as well and just you know how that maybe changes perspectives on these types of projects at the moment or with an eye to mg and &E. so i think it's just a win-win to get something set up and give us some direction as to where we're where we're heading or where we need to be focus going forward here okay does that sound good to everybody it does yeah i think that's a great plan okay well that is what we're off to do all right so do you guys want to go through any of this plan at all and see like what we were talking about before um 
I just got a text from my wife that in 15 minutes, I have to be at Imperial Garden to pick up our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm the... pretty good. I'm okay with, with deferring that. That's, yeah. so we got a little I, bit I, done what, here. That's what I was trying to say is I would like to defer. Okay, that's what I was like. Where, how far away is Imperial Garden? What do we have? Five minutes? Uh, it's ten minutes. It's ten minutes from here. Okay. Um, yeah, we can definitely defer, but I mean, just looking at some of this stuff. I don't know. I kind of was looking at it, and it was just kind of like, I yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with some of these. All right, well, if you guys want to defer, we can just wait. Why, uh, why don't we all take as homework that before the next meeting, we should review the sustainability plan, especially the, the, the 25 items we have listed, and everybody comes to the next meeting with, you know, their opinions on the viability of, our, of that plan, our, each individual item on it. You know, viability of each one. Yes. You know, is this something that we think we can do, or do we have new information that says, no, this isn't going to happen? Right. Or, and if we think we can do it, at least a idea of how we go forward with it, you know, a semblance of a plan. Right, right. Okay, that sounds good. A variation on that theme could also be reviewing the plan and seeing if um, it needs to be reprioritized. I think initially we did that based on the community um, survey. On the survey. Yep. But I, I, yeah. wasn't it just the last meeting that we were talking, you know, because one of the things that came out of the survey was, you know, a village compost, you know, village-wide composting. And, and you know, I think we kind of came to the conclusion that the technology isn't there and it would be very, very expensive to do. Um, and so I thought we'd postpone that one. Well, it's that kind of thing that, you know, maybe the, it was a great wish list but as we dig into some of these things, we have we learn maybe sometime in the future, but probably not right now. Was that the the food waste one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Michael, would you mind sending us like the shortest of emails with that Google Doc link? As that can be kind of our reminder. Because I'll, yeah. I'll keep that as my uh, my to do. So you want me know. to send you an email with that in there? Well, I'm just thinking the group, Melissa. and then Melissa knows oh. she's got an assignment to just kind of hey, here's a, here's a one follow up for next time. Yeah. We're going to do. Why we just gave you homework? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? I'm emailing the link and saying <laughs> uh, how viable is each one of these items you have. Or, yeah. or how do you think you would accomplish them? And how? What's the viability? Yeah. Yeah. How about that? We'll we'll make that be our. If I had my system up here, I would just do it right now. Everything's just coming back to life. I got to reset all the clocks now. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly rarely have power outages in cross planes. If you think about it. That's at least my experience has been. I, they're super I, rare. I, 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 we've had some really short. I mean, in 26 years, we've had a couple short, blippy ones. This is the longest one I can ever remember. Huh. Even during the flood, we didn't lose power. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what was very weird is today. I was out. I was driving by the pool today, and there were a bunch of trucks. Do you know what this was, Brian? There were a bunch of trucks in the pool parking lot, and it looked like they were disassembling the guts of the like the pool water processing system because there were some tanks 
or else they were installing new things into that building. Okay. Because out on the concrete by the pool, there were these big tanks. I think they might have been the filters. I'm not really too sure. But as I continued to drive by the pool and before I made it to Elmwood, or is that Woods, Woodside, like, or Elmwood Circle there, there was like two MG&E trucks parked there. And like the dudes were like sitting on their bumpers, like they were waiting to do something. And I was like, hmm. what's going on here? Hmm. So Suspicious. Yeah, I was like, okay, got a bunch of stuff being pulled out of the pool building, and there's two MGE trucks sitting here like they're waiting for them to. I don't know if they were waiting for them or if they were waiting for some other place in town to do something before they went to work. I'm just letting you know that you were talking about power stuff. So I saw these weird things that I don't normally see every day in the village. I think hmm. we can come up with a conspiracy theory <laughs> easily. <laughs> Easily. I didn't know we had an electric pool. <laughs> that was dangerous. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to jump everything. We already had next steps. Future meeting will be in November. Are there any future agenda items anyone wants? Uh, hearing none. No. Um, do we wish to adjourn? Steve I'll will make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I'll second Steve's motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. See you later. Yeah. See you guys. <laughs>